Welcome to the last spell. In this playthrough video, we will present the game and all its features. Brace yourselves. It's going to be a long night. The last spell is divided into days, which are split into three phases. The first phase is deployment. You will play as three randomly generated heroes. Each one is unique with its own weapons and abilities. Use the character sheet to familiarize yourself with your heroes and discover their primary and secondary stats, along with their strengths and weaknesses. Before the battle, you can view the overall state of your defenses and strategically place each hero depending on their skills and, most importantly, the direction of incoming enemy waves. Once your heroes are in place, the second phase begins. Battle. The battle phase is turn-based and only ends when all of your enemies are defeated. When it's time to attack, you'll play your characters and their actions in an order of your choosing. Each hero is defined by three resources, action points, mana points, and move points. Move points indicate the number of tiles a hero can move to at each turn. If you move a hero, but then change your mind, no worries. As long as no action is completed, you can cancel a hero's movements with just a click. During the battle phase, your goal is to optimize your available action points to trigger the deadliest attacks and defeat as many enemies as possible. Some skills require mana points, which allow you to cast powerful spells. Mana will regenerate partially, but only at the end of this phase, so use it wisely. Each weapon has its own set of attacks. Your heroes can equip two different sets of weapons. It's up to you to switch between them, depending on the situation, and optimize your assault. When you're finished attacking, your turn is over, and the enemy's turn begins. Waves of foes will steadily appear, and it's up to you to slay them and prevent them from overrunning your city. Enemies will attack everything in their path. Heroes, barricades, walls and buildings. So it's important to anticipate how they'll progress. As the battle progresses, you'll see the exact number of creatures left to kill in order to end the battle phase. Once you've vanquished the last enemy, the game's third phase begins. Production. Congratulations! You just survived your first battle in the last spell. After enduring the carnage, it's time for you to collect your rewards. The level of your rewards is determined by your city's panic level. If no enemies enter the city, expect many gifts. However, if victory was claimed only by the skin of your teeth, your rewards will be fewer. Also, depending on the skill you displayed on the battlefield, you might be rewarded with Tainted Essence. We'll talk about them later. Materials allow you to build defenses like barricades and walls, as well as more offensive solutions that you will discover later in the game. With gold, the possibilities are many. Different buildings can be constructed, such as temples and mana walls to refill your hero's health points and mana. Meanwhile, gold mines and scavenger camps allow you to gather more resources. There are workers in your city, but their numbers are limited, so make sure to assign them based on your level of need. Buildings can be upgraded over time to produce more resources, and as the game progresses, you'll also discover new buildings for your city. Shops are where you'll buy gear, potions, and items to boost your stats. Don't hesitate to sell what your heroes no longer use. Later on, your gold will have additional uses. For instance, when you want to recruit new heroes during a run. After each battle, your heroes will gain experience points, allowing them to level up. 
It's up to you to decide which stat to power up. Boost your strongest skills, balance your weak spots, or a combination of both. These improvements are randomly generated with different degrees of rarity and effectiveness, creating new scenarios for each game. Every time one of your heroes levels up, you earn a perk point that can be spent in a dedicated menu for optimizing your skills and creating new strategies. Once you've allocated all of your resources, positioned your heroes and armed them to the teeth, and rebuilt your defenses, the production phase ends and a new night of battle begins. In the last spell, you'll encounter a large roster of enemies with diverse attacks and skills. The farther you progress, the more you will need to adapt to creatures that get stronger with each passing night. Careful planning is essential. You'll be surprised by how easy it is to get surrounded and overwhelmed. In the last spell, you will die a lot. The game ends if all of your heroes die in battle or if the magic circle is destroyed. Fortunately, with each attempt, you learn more about the game, resource management, and your enemies. After each battle, you can also get help from the Oraculum. The Oraculum is a place run by two mysterious beings. Here you can permanently unlock new weapons, buildings, and skills, which will be available during your current playthrough, as well as all future ones. Oraculum content can be unlocked in two ways. Use the tainted essence from your fallen enemies, or accomplish different in-game objectives. Getting help from the Oraculum is essential for continuously strengthening your heroes, defenses, buildings, and economy, which in turn will help you progress further and further in the game. The Last Spell is an intense strategy game full of surprises. It's easy to learn, but hard to master. As such, it offers various options for customizing your playthrough. For example, starting the game with more resources, more heroes, and fewer in-game enemies. This concludes the gameplay overview. It's now up to you to prepare your heroes and build strong defenses. The enemy waves are merciless, and many surprises are in store. If you can't defend the magic circle until the very end, well, better luck next time.